So most of the information I'm going to get today about how to use the cement mixer and how to mix concrete comes out of the Concrete Basics booklet. This is freely available online, so you can search this up online and um, get this yourself. So this has all the more technical information that you need about how to vibrate, what MPA is, what a slump test is, written in really basic language and has pictures and stuff, so that's really helpful. Now before you get started, you need to do two things. One is you need to make sure you're ready before you start mixing concrete. The last thing you want is to have concrete mixed and then you find your boxing's in the wrong spot or you're missing tools or something like that. The other thing is to do with safety. You're going to be using a hose with the cement mixer and hose and electricity don't mix. So this is one of those jobs where it's really important to make sure you have a lead stand. If you have a look at this plug, it's got a little lip on here. So when you plug the other lead in, if that plug is hanging that way, it's going to fill up with water as we spray water around. So you want that hanging that way so the water just runs over past the plug. So hang that up in such a way that the water will drain off the plug. And suspended lead all the way across to your power supply. Then check your mixer. Make sure that all the belts and everything have a proper cover over it. And where the cogs meat in there has a cover over it as well so you don't get your fingers and stuff caught in there now obviously if that was running and I shoved my hand in there I could still get it caught in there so that means when we're using the mixer just back up a bit when we're using the mixer don't reach over the mixer like this because stuff can get caught in all the gears so when you come to tip it you need to grab this handle here and pull like that so if you're not strong enough or heavy enough to do that don't reach over like this and try and do it with the other one so if you can't get it yourself get somebody on the other side to help you lift it over the other thing is in terms of maintenance um, you give all these gears a good cover of grease there's a grease nipple here to grease inside the housing there so make sure it's greased this has got a fan belt on it too so every now and then take the cover off check the fan belt make sure it's in good condition another thing is that the motor on these uh, use a lot of power so it's a bit like the compressor, you need a high quality lead and keep the lead as short as possible so that the supply of electricity to the motor um, is good. You notice we've got a, um, this mixer has stands on it, so <clears throat> easy. you just lift the mixer up to the right height and change it to the height of whatever hole you want. Now you need to get the mixer up high enough to be able to fit the, the wheelbarrow in. So, the way you set up, you want to be set up in such a way that when you pour it in here, that you just walk straight off towards your job. We're going to be pouring concrete over there, so we've got everything facing the right way. You don't want it facing that way and then have to turn around. Right? So set up the right way. Before you start mixing, make sure you've got the mixer up high enough that when the mixer tips over like that, that the barrow the barrel of the mixer can drop the concrete down here because sometimes if the mix is too low and if the mix is too low you can't actually tip the mixer enough if that does happen at any time you can tilt the wheelbarrow to drop that down a little bit more like that and you're better off to have the mixer set up at the right height so just check that all that's good before you go the other thing you notice that our wheelbarrow has dirt in it so dirt and concrete aren't good for each other. Dirt um, weakens concrete, so you want to clean this out. So when you're mixing concrete, everything needs to be clean. The cement, the screenings, the sand, the water. You don't want any dirt or impurities in it all. So, we've made sure our mixer's all good, ready to go, we've got water. The other thing you check is the site where you're going to pour. So we're going to pour concrete in here. So we've got our <coughs> screed ready to go. Now, if you're fairly new at concreting, you're better off to work your screed from boxing on one side to the other side, because that way you can just go across the boxing to get your concrete straight. Experienced concreters can do it without that, but we're not experienced. The other thing is on here, on the screed, you've got a round edge and a square edge. So you want the <coughs> round edge, I've got it the right way, I think. 
yeah, you have the round edge facing towards you. I'm pretty sure. I'll find out when I do it because I do it so automatically, <laughs> I don't really know. But when you're screeding, if you find it's not working properly, just flip it around because I'm pretty sure the round edge faces towards you, the square edge to the back, but it could be the other way, I'm not sure. And so make sure everything's set up. We've got our Rio also on chairs. The other thing about Rio, so this is rein, steel reinforcing. Have it on the chairs so that you get the Rio up at the right height in the concrete. In exposed concrete like this, the distance from the Rio to the exposed edge of the concrete is a maximum of 40 millimeters. So all that information's in that book that I showed you before. All right, so we're ready to go. We've got all our tools. 